Hi winners, this is Dr. Srikanth from Team MDS Conquer. Now I will be talking about adrenal gland disorders in NEAT and AIMS point of view. The first important aspect that to be focused is about MAN syndrome. Okay, MAN syndrome is of different types. So the first important type is the type 1. So type 1, the easy way to remember is it contains three major things. They are called as, you can remember it as P, P and P. That is parathyroid hyperplasia or adenoma, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, and pituitary adenoma. Okay, all these three P's are present in MAN type 1 syndrome. So, apart from this, in this particular individual, you can see facial, facial cutaneous angiofibromas, subcutaneous or visceral lipomas, and this is mainly due to MAN 1 defect. Okay, that is MAN1 gene defect, which is located on chromosome number 11. And, and this particular MAN1 syndrome is autosomal dominant. You can remember that all the types of MAN, that is MAN1, MAN2, MAN3, and MAN4, all are dominant. You can simply remember the MAN syndrome, all the types are dominant, MAN are dominant, right? Okay, the next one is MAN2. Okay, MAN2 is also called as 2a that is man 2a is also characteristic with sippel syndrome a term called as sippel syndrome okay in this particular aspect you can remember it as okay previous one it is a p p and p right previous one it is p p and p whereas this particular one is you can remember it as p p and m okay m for medullary carcinoma whereas p for pheochromocytoma and other p is parathyroid hormone parathyroid hyperplasia or adenoma similarly like that of man1 that is ppm this the code is ppm and it is mainly associated with the defect in the red gene and it is located on the chromosome number 10 and it is autosomal dominant similarly to the type 1 the next comes is type 3 type 3 is also called as 2b type 3 is also called as 2b type 1 is the code is ppp type 2 the code is ppm whereas type 3 the code is pmm okay so p is pheochromocytoma m for medullary carcinoma of thyroid which is present in the 2a also then all the m's most of the futures are seen with megacolon or uh, morphinoid features all these seen okay and similarly like that of red gene similarly to that of your 2a and it is similar to that of your 2a that is chromosome number 10 defect and all men are dominant it is autosomal dominant the next one is you 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 cannot found this regularly in most of the books okay but it's a newly added stuff and you have to make a note that is men 4 which is also called as men x okay so these are the features which are seen in the men x that is hyperparathyroidism, pituitary adenoma, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, gonal adrenal renal tumors and thyroid tumors. Okay, you can see morphed features also in this particular individual. And this is basically due to the defect of cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor, which is located on chromosome 12. Most of the features are almost similar to that of man 1 okay the only difference between man 4 and man 1 is uh, the defective there it is man 1 gene defect here it is cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor so you can simply add a definition for man 4 is all the features which are seen in the man 1 okay but if your mutation is diagnosed as cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor then you can diagnose this as man 4 okay hope you're clear with uh, most of your questions will what is the common between two uh, a to b what is which is which is the future that is seen in the sippel syndrome futures that are seen in the man for uh, or else they can ask you the chromosome number or they can ask you the simply the mode of inheritance the mode of inheritance is common for all that is uh, autosomal dominant a regularly asked question uh, in the stuff that we have discussed yesterday when we were talking about thyroid gland carcinomas is which type of thyroid gland carcinoma is most commonly seen in the men's syndrome is a commonly asked question the answer is the medullary carcinoma because you can see medullary carcinoma as a common feature in both 2a 2b 
okay in 2a 2b both the types you can see the medullary carcinoma as a common feature pheocytochroma is common for it is common for 2a 2b right so such questions are most common for you in the examination and please do make a note of all the four types of this men's syndrome okay so once you are done with the men's syndrome apart from this the most important aspect where a number of n number of questions i have seen is pheocytochroma okay so before that we need to talk about the adrenal gland so this is an adrenal gland which is close in association with your kidney and adrenal gland has uh, two major parts in it that is the cortex and the medulla and the medulla will have this particular type of cells which are mainly responsible for pheochromocytoma those cells are called as chromaffin cells those cells are called as chromaffin cells which are the primary cause for the occurrence of pheochromocytoma okay next important aspect when you're talking about pheochromocytoma and the question that is given in 2018 neat rule of 10 is mainly associated with you have other rule of 10 which we have learned in the cleft lift and cleft palate surgery that is called as rule of 10 of millard rule of 10 of millard is cleft lift and cleft palate there is other rule of 10 which is applicable for the diagnosis or the confirmation of pheochromocytoma so what this rule of 10 says okay the rule of 10 says that 10 percentage of these tumors are extra adrenaline 10 percentage are bilateral means most of them are unilateral or solitary 90 percentage of them are unilateral or solitary but 10 percentage are bilateral 10 percentage are familiar 10 percentage the occur in children 10 percentage are malignant most of them are benign and 10 percentage the occur in men syndrome which type of men syndromes they can be seen in 2a and 2b 10 percentage they occur with a stroke okay 10 percentage they occur with recurrent they are concerned with 10 chromosome okay we have learned that both 2a and 2b are associated with chromosome number 10 okay so you can add this as rule of 10 okay so all these are very very important aspect whenever this tumor occurs extra adrenaline okay the most common site of occurrence of extra adrenaline is the organ of jucaland okay this is the most common site of occurrence of the extra adrenaline tumor of this particular type okay hope you are clear until now okay and malignancy is 10 percentage make a note this is a benign tumor but malignancy can be seen in 10 percentage of the cases okay so what happens okay so come if you talk about the uh, the the pathology that is associated with this particular tumor whenever you have excess or whenever you have uh, size increasing in the size of this adrenal gland okay the adrenal gland is going to produce uh, non epinephrine as well as non adrenaline as well as adrenaline okay it's going to produce adrenaline and non adrenaline okay preferably it produce more non adrenaline than adrenaline that's a, that's a question they can ask you just please do make a note so coming to the clinical features this classic triad is very very important the classic triad contains uh, recurrent headache or episodic headache they can call as or diaphoresis okay and palpations the patient complaints of uh, you can see these symptoms very rarely but the patient complaints of loss of weight uh, that is mainly due to increasing in the energy expenditure you more energy is, uh, is is spent so that the patient will have loss of weight okay and the most common symptom that you see in these patients is headache okay the most common symptom that you can see is a headache and the most common manifestation okay manifestation uh, you can see it as hypertension hypertension is the most common manifestation whereas the most common symptom is is headache the patient complains of frequent headache so in the case based question they can give you this particular associated features because they can give you they can consider it as men's two or three syndrome they can give you the extra features or extra tumors that are present or they can ask they can tell you that a simple uh, sign like uh, the patient have a frequent or a severe episodic headaches 
uh, which make us to deviate towards the CNS band, but it is basically this particular tumor. Okay, you can have the loss of weight, okay, uh, due to heavy expenditure of the energy, and you have several cardiac manifestations okay uh, that can be given in the particular question about the description but in this particular mode of questions where i have seen multiple uh, uh, case based questions on this area the best finding that they give is they will they will clearly tell that upon urinary examination the patient has an increasing in vma levels or urinary you can have excess of catecholamines that are secreted okay so this is a common finding regularly or most commonly asked you blindly you can go for the answer like whenever they talk about something like vmas are increased or catecholamines are secreted then you can go straight away for this particular option so but you can see in the in the plasma you can see metanephrines and catecholamines so metanephrines or catecholamines metanephrines are nothing but they are the breakdown products of the catechol amines or uh, pharmacologically you can try by giving glucagon infusion to the patient whenever you give uh, the glucagon inf infusion the glucagon in this particular patient is going to secrete extra catechol amines so whenever extra catechol amines are released the patient's hypertension will be increased and the patient uh, the blood pressure you can monitor the blood pressure so you the blood pressure will be increased so by which you can diagnose but it's not frequently used the most commonly used are the first and the second okay so coming to the other uh, other investigations that you can make a note so as it is a soft tissue uh, the best option is mri you can see in this particular mri there is a by the, these are the you can see clearly these are the uh, the, these are the tumors that you can see a bilateral uh, tumors okay so mri is the best option either for adrenal or extra adrenal uh, and particularly you can use this in pregnancy women also with a high with a good uh, sensitivity and specificity for identification of the disorder okay you can use ct but uh, mri is always the best option biopsies uh, uh, everything like even if, when you are using ct make a note uh, you should perform this procedure without any uh, contrast administration without any administration of contrasting contrasting agent okay the main reason like even if you do biopsy or any sort of injection of contracting agent there will be uh, there will be a, a hypertensive crisis which is uh, which is not a good indication okay so biopsies and ct with contrasting agent are contraindicated in these patients to avoid the hypertensive crisis so coming to the treatment plan okay so the treatment plan is just the removal okay that is adrenalectomy can be done and preferable type of adrenalectomy is laparoscopic adrenalectomy you can do laparoscopic adrenalectomy and uh, and and they can they can few few times they can consider the size of the tumor also so uh, when you go for the laparoscopic adrenalectomy make sure that the tumor should be less than 5 centimeters in diameter okay and uh, you can add one more point when the tumor size is more than 10 centimeters in diameter the best approach of uh, uh, the diagnosis or the treatment is by using iodine 131 radioisotope okay uh, you can add this particular point also okay so before going to the treatment before uh, before you start the treatment okay so there are few pre-treatment precautions that you have to take so before st starting the treatment you have to do i mean like for example if you take your adrenal gland adrenal gland is increasing in the size so whenever your adrenal gland is increasing in the size what is going to happen your uh, non adrenaline and or non adrenal non epinephrine or epinephrine values will be increased so when this non uh, these values are increased this has some effects on alpha 1 beta 1 and beta 2 receptors what alpha 1 uh, effects are it is going to cause vasoconstriction it's going to cause smooth muscle construction also when it acts on beta 1 receptors beta 1 receptors is going to increase cardiac output it's going to increase the heart rate it's going to increase the stroke volume all these are related to the CVS. When it adds on the beta 2, beta 2 is mainly concerned with the smooth muscle relaxation. Okay. 
smooth muscle relaxation so all these manifest manifestations has to be countered uh, before you remove this particular gland okay how how to do that okay so there are two things that you have to do before you start this particular treatment or before you are planning to remove the adrenal called as adrenalectomy which is a choice of treatment for this condition that is called as alpha adrenogenic blockers first you have to do alpha adrenogenic blockers then once it is completed then you have to do beta adrenogenic blockers so once these two are achieved then you can plan your surgery so alpha is always the first followed by beta then you can plan this particular treatment so what to be done in alpha the alpha procedure will run for somewhere around 10 to 14 days okay what you have to do in this 10 to 14 days before the surgery is you have to give the drug phenoxine benzenamide this phenoxy benzenamide has to be given to the patient for 10 to 14 days and the patient should be in high sodium diet should be in high sodium diet which is greater than 5 grams per day before the surgery so by using this the alpha adrenogenic blockage can be done followed by once the alpha adrenogenic blockage is done then you have to go for beta adrenogenic blockage by using a drug called as propanolol so once alpha adrenogenic blockage is done beta adrenogenic blockage is done then you can plan for your laparoscopic adrenalectomy surgery okay so so this is a very very important in examination point of view among the uh, topics what i have mentioned you to complete uh, in the in the in the particular topic of uh, the disorders of adrenaline and parathyroid okay in adrenaline and parathyroid these two topics are very 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 important and most of the mcqs which were covered in the last few years and which uh, which can be asked were clearly covered in this video so please try to do this do this video once or twice so that everything can be retained with a proper mind map your mind maps are very very important so that your revision will go cool okay all our main target is to revise everything two to three times in the last three months okay so last three months game plan is very very important where your mind maps and your notes and everything plays a very very vital role okay signing off for now dr Srikanth from team mds control